now joined by Herman from Dragon Force. How are you today, Herman? I'm doing great, thank you. Fantastic. Where are you today? I'm in Los Angeles. Ah, fantastic, here in California. Well, I know yeah. we're so excited about the new record coming out on uh, and, and featuring so many of your great songs. Tell us a little bit of background, though. We'd love to find out, of course, how you got started in music. At what age did you start playing guitar, and who were your musical inspirations at that time? Uh, I started playing guitar when I was 16. Um, just kind of random. I thought, why not? Let's try something different. And I was into, I guess, a lot of the rock and the metal stuff, like um, you know, Metallica to Bon Jovi to... Then I got into, um, I guess, the, my, my favorite guitar players was like Joe Satriani, Steve Vai, and like Dream Theater as well. Sure. So now when you and Sam got together, you know, and, and put the elements of this band together, you know, what, what, was, your, what was your thought? What, what, what do you felt was your calling and what was missing that you guys wanted to fill in the rock world? Well, the main reason we started the band was we wanted to play some kind of music that has melodic singing that's catchy, you know, memorable. And also, we just wanted to play some shows. So, you know, we always thought playing a gig is fun, um, even back when we were playing in school, you know. Um, and that was, um, that, was, that was it. And here we are still doing it after all these years and with so many albums out. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're celebrating 16 years with uh, Dragon Force and... I know, of course, there's always the evolution of the band. Tell us kind of, uh, you know, when you started making the albums, kind of how the band has evolved over the course of all the albums you've done now. Um, I guess the first three albums, or four even, they were basically every single song was fast, and they were like minimum six minutes to... They're all really long, long epic songs, so much guitar solos. You know, and we've we've done it so much that we've evolved in adding more stuff into it. Now we have we actually finally have shorter, have some shorter songs, some slower songs, and even some heavier and faster. So we're just kind of adding more and more um, elements into our style as we're growing as a band. Um, you know, it's it's, um, it's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It's you guys are definitely known for you know your guitar solos and. And just the over-the-top, you know, presentation. Um, what are what are some of the standout tours that you've done, or uh, some some of the uh, bills and bands that you've been able to perform with? I mean, the early days, um, we toured the Iron Maiden on our second album, which is like really amazing wow. for us. We did like the I think it was the early days tour, so it was, they were massive shows. And at the beginning, when we first started off and we had a demo, we played with Rob Halford on tour. Yeah. <laughs> and so we, we played with a lot of legend, legendary bands. And we, we, um, and we, we came here, we did the Oz Fest in 2006. That was pretty much our kind of first time in America. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, um, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. Now, yeah. You, didn't you do the uh, Mayhem Festival also? That's right. We did that. We were the, we were the main support for um, Disturbed and Slipknot, which we played just before then. So that, that, was, a, that was a big thing. And along at that time, there was people talking about the Guitar Hero thing, so sort of all kinds of things happening. Sure. sure. Well, I know, obviously, you know, in Europe, the, the festival business has been, uh, you know, going for so many years, and there's more and more new festivals, you know, starting up in, uh, you know, America. But what, what do you find is the biggest differences of, audiences, you know, around the world? I mean, if you look at the European festivals, since we talk about festivals, um, they are much more kind of chilled out and easier going than the U.S. ones. What I mean by you buy one ticket and you go wherever you want. You don't have, there's no separation of lawn, seats, box, any of that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just, just the European lifestyle is a little bit more chill. Um, and they they usually last for a few days camping in, on site, and it's it's kind of a really really cool atmosphere. All the you know this, you don't have to worry so much about you know certain certain rules you have in the U.S. <laughs> right, so a little less corporate, a little more of a community. Yeah, and everything is closed in Europe. You know, you don't have, and it's not going to be so hot in the summer like in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Well, I, I, I know you've uh, now chosen to live here. Why, why do you, on your rare time off, uh, choose, choose California as your home base? Well, it's, I was going to say neither one, actually freezing at the moment outside. Um, but, you know, I've, I've lived in Europe for so long in my life, so it's, um, it's actually kind of cool changing to come up here in Southern, Southern California. I have a good time doing different things that I, I wouldn't do in Europe at all. Yeah. Well, I know you've you've toured so many countries around the world. Uh, what 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 is the what is the strangest place that you've you've ever played? Strangest. Yeah. Have you been um, been in a situation where it felt very third world or or or, or very like radically different? I mean, the, it's, it may be shocking, but the, probably the the country with the most metal fans, the craziest audience. Right now, it's probably Indonesia. Yeah. And, and it, you know, you just wouldn't expect it. But those fans are so into it. And we, we're not like, you know, Bon Jovi, but we were at the airport and everyone knew who we were. And they weren't just coming up and they thought, oh, this must be a foreign band. Let's take photos of them. They were calling our names, you know. And there was the guy from the airport, um, passport checking, security, the restaurant, the bar. I mean, they all were coming up. It's crazy. So do you think some of that has to do with the fact that, that not many artists go over there? So kind of like South America, they're very they're very starved for for their artists. Um, I think more and more bands starting to go there, um, but they have a thing. They just love metal in Indonesia. Yeah, it's just crazy. Well, that's fantastic. Well, I know you guys are gearing up for the new album and new tour. Please tell us tell us all about the album. What we can expect. Um, um, it's a, you know, like we're always evolving. So now we actually have songs that are slightly shorter, which actually makes a uh, difference. We actually, actually makes the show a bit, I would say, more dynamic instead of overdose on, you know, fast song, fast song, every single song. So it's, it's, it's kind of cool now that we play, you know, different, different, a bit more dynamic set. And we just released, um, like a DVD we filmed so far. So that's, 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 that was filmed in a massive arena in Japan, so people can check it out. And, and where was the live filmed? Uh, it's Saitama Super Arena in Japan. Oh, fantastic. And why did you choose that location to do it? Uh, it's, it's really kind of a legendary place. I mean, they had the, in the old days the, fr- the prize fighting championship. They had the ultimate fighting championship happened just there two weeks ago. It's like a really cool venue. So many things happened there in Japan. And Herman, after all you've seen in, in you know the business and through your you know trials and tribulations of growing your band, what advice do you give to the young guitarists, the young players in bands today? What do they really need to concentrate on as far as you know finding their own style and really persevering in this very competitive business? Ah, uh, there's so many things, but one thing for absolutely sure: if you're going to do this, you have to really love the music. And you're doing it for the music, not because you think there's some kind of fame and glory at the end out of it. Because the chances are pretty low, it's really competitive. And nowadays, the deals, the record deals, are actually worse than they used to be in some way. I mean, they're completely different now, the way the music industry has changed. So I think all musicians have to be on top of, of the business side as much as they can. Yeah, you have to you have to protect yourself. You know, this is definitely fun and it, and it's creative, but it's also a business. And if you don't handle your business, someone else may handle it for you, and it might be to their advantage and not yours. Yeah, that's right. Well, Herman, it's been a real pleasure as always. Look forward to seeing the mighty Dragon Force out on tour. We're going to spread the news on the on the live DVD and everything you guys have going. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. We'll see you soon.